Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well, and today, my friends, we're back with the Vampire Coast vs. Dinosaur Showdown. It's going to be myself with Count Noctilus facing off against Hadris here, and the Fire Toad should be quite a bit of fun, and we are bringing back the Forbidden uh, Arts here from Total War Warhammer 2. So back when Vampire Coast first launched, a very powerful strategy was to go for the Double Colossus. A uh, lot of stopping power. They're, you know, reasonably mobile. Unfortunately, their melee fighting is really, really bad. It's something about their animations, but Double Colossus used to be pretty good. And you could also use the Gunnery White to give them extra powder, which we will be summoning in. Which, in theory, in a domination game could be good. Like a really long battle, just having waves and waves of ammunition and shooting and terror causing against, like, Blizzardman Chaff. Maybe there's something there, but again, just experimenting. We'll see how it goes. Frontline's going to be deckhand mobs backed up by pistols to shoot at the flyers. We have Lamprey's Revenge, which are just always a good unit. Their regeneration, their ability to just like tank missiles. Uh, I really, really like Lamprey's. I think they're a great unit. And that's pretty much it. Noctil's going to be coming with Pit of Shades and Invocation. And for the Army of Hadri, it's going to be classic dinos. Basically just a million chameleon skinks. He's got cohorts in the back. And he's got the Gary Goon Squad. So he does have the uh, double Rev Crystal. Lots of healing on these guys. Banana Toad going to be using Flamestorm and Burning Head, which they can do some crazy damage. Uh, if you have a Banana Toad, for example, you cast two, you save up enough to cast both these spells and Banishment. You can like just get three fat spells in their face very, very quickly. And against Coast, who can't really dodge any of those effects because the zombies only have 23 speed, it's reasonably viable for sure. So the battle is on, and the Colossus is going to move up. Unfortunately, I can't see his Chameleon Skinks, and I do send some Felbats. I was a little bit curious about what he was up to here, so Felbats is going to be moving out, and I do get darted. And now we start to, you know, exchange fire with the Chameleon Skinks. So I do heal up the Felbats. Didn't want to give him a free bat. I figured, hey, let's uh, just use that Invo. It's only seven wins of magic. And uh, yes, then the battle rages on as Noctula shoots downtown and does pick off a couple Skinks here. But doesn't it, like, yeah, it's kind of weird. I feel like it should have been shooting more at the center mass. But Pistols get a little bit of returning fire here on the bottom side. We are going to be sending up some animated Hulks and Zombies. So pressuring both fronts. You know, Vampire Coast is a faction that's pretty good at moving in in multiple directions and uh, just getting unholy wave and wave of zombies with hulks and depth guard and all that sort of good stuff. But the Double Colossus is fully functional. We do have our Gunnery White in the back, and uh, the Gunnery White is going to be rocking Scab Scraith, which is an anti-infantry clearing tool, which is very good against dinos already. And he does also have more powder. So more powder does have four uses. And the party's going to get started. So Banishment going down in Flamestorm. Flamestorm, pretty good. Did get a cost reduction. Does go through those zombie pirate deckhand mobs and do some damage. And then the Banana Toad is going to be dropping a Fat Banishment over here as well. So nice stuff from Hadri's. The 1-2 punch right out of the gates. But as far as value goes, you can see they're not worth much as they're still fighting. And it looks like we are going to get some flyers coming in. So Ripper Dactyls are one of the other hidden gems on the Dino roster. I wouldn't even say a hidden gem. I think most Lizardmen players really know how good these things are. Anti-infantry, good armor piercing. You know, if you need to fight a crab, for example, they still have super high melee attack, so they can deal with non-infantry. Armor, very effective as well. Burning head in the distance does go through the pistol mobs. And now we start to push on the bottom. So we got double animated hulks. We got the Salt Lord Scuttlers. Deckhand mobs moving in, but do eat a fat javelin. And Hadrius did also park one of his Bastilodons here. So he's got Gary here to drop the fat heels if need be. But we do have the big guns, and they are a going as the uh, the big Colossus, I believe, now going to be shooting at the Ripper Dactyls. The Ripper Dactyls are a very good target for the Colossus. Cavalry are what they're really good against. I would say the Colossus against Bretonia could actually be a decent pick. But here we do rip some shots, and you can see some of the Ripper Dactyls uh, do take some HP damage, but it doesn't kill any models outright. The other Colossus unfortunately does miss, but we're having a little bit of a standoff here, but... On the bright side of things, the Chameleon Skinks are down to about half ammo. We haven't really taken, like, considerable, you know, serious damage. Most of the damage we have taken is kind of superficial on zombie units, which are pretty expendable. So not a huge, huge problem, really. But more shots from the Colossus do miss the Ripper Dactyls that time. As far as this fighting goes, unfortunately, the Salt Lord Scuttlers do get caught a little bit by the Ripper Dactyls. And uh, they are large size, so the bonus for its infantry won't come into play. But even still, they die very quickly. So we run back them, uh, run them back to the pistol mobs. So the pistol mobs come in with their pistols, should be able to screen these out. And overall, this should be an okay fight for us. Animated hulks will be pretty efficient at just cutting through the various lizards. And if the Bastilodon overstays its welcome, it could be surrounded and killed by the Bastilodons or by the by the animated hulks. They're not Bastilodons, they're, they're crab uh, hulk monstrosity things, which I think are really good. Animated hulks did get a little bit of a nerf in this patch, but overall I would still say they're going to be a staple for Vampire Coast builds. Now, up on the top side, we do have a zombie pirate jackhand mobs moving forward. I figured it was about time to move up. You know, we were having this little kind of weapons exchange. And, uh, you know, he was running a little bit lighter on ammo. So I was like, all right, let's push the tempo a little bit. We used an invocation using our Lamprey's Revenge to absorb a ton of that ammunition. And invocation in conjunction with their natural regeneration will make them a very, very stalwart unit. On the bottom side, the fight's getting a little bit scary. You know, he's got the flying mobile advantage. It kind of made me feel as if I should have just pushed everything up in the high ground and kept a concentrated formation. Granted, Coast is pretty good at swarming and just having hulks and zombies push up on all points, but 
Yeah, even still, he's really showing me the Lizardman mobility here as we do see the Ripper Dactyls ripping through the gunnery mobs here. Gunnery mobs also compromised by skank cohorts, which, you know, in stat comparison, we do have 20, 24, 25, and six melee defense on the pistol variant, so they're going to be pretty bad. But scurvy dogs are not bad at chewing on Ripper Dactyls. They only have 40 armor, so scurvy dogs and other units like that can respond. We also pull out some Death Guard, but overall this position is looking a little bit lost for us. Up at the high ground, the push is going quite a bit better. We're getting closer and closer to the Lizardman objective. Looking at value trading, it's very dead even. As a matter of fact, Value's probably, I would say, dead even because I have healing. He has healing on Rev Crystals. Uh, invocations are going down. You can see an invocation on Lamprey. So, yeah, I would say the value is just right down the pipe this game. As, you know, Count Noctilus and his other Colossus haven't been doing terrible damage. You can see some of the uh, Flyers, like the Ripperdactyl Swarms, are getting a little bit beat up from some of the perpetual shooting. Death Guard Halberd summoned in. I saw that he had some, you know, big scary mass in the Ripperdactyl, so I decided to bring in some Halberds, but... At the end of the day, I do realize that this bottom objective is more or less going to be lost. So I should probably start, you know, stop fighting over this bad boy and go up to the north with my depth guard, unify them with my healers, and use them to, uh, you know, keep this slow push going. Bomber bat's doing good though. They were able to melt uh, several units of the skinks. So you can see the skink cohorts got wrecked here, and uh, the other skinks are on the way back while my pistol mobs keep pushing. Just the dreaded slow push and the double colossus, you know, not not doing terribly. Kind of happy with it. A little shooting from downtown, of course, uh, loving to obstruct one another as uh, they are shooting into chameleon skinks, which feels pretty bad. It's a little bit of splash damage, but honestly, he didn't have any targets for me really here. His whole build is just kind of like smaller things. We do have the sacred, uh, yeah, sacred Croxagores coming out. Yeah, the big men. So these are the Power Fist Croxagores from, straight from the uh, Ultramarines chapter. But they do have uh, magic damage and also have the dazed effect, and they do punch very hard. I like this as like a tech piece against crab spam. So sometimes Vampire Coast will come in with like two or three crabs, like Lampreys Revenge and a couple other, uh, you know, Crab guns. <laughs> crab guns, I guess is what they are. Yeah, rotting Promethean gunnery mobs. And uh, yeah, they can punch through those guys reasonably well. Now, value trading. A little bit ahead for the dinos. Things have gotten a little bit scary down here. I've been pretty much completely swept. Uh, you know, I I underestimated the fury of the Ripper Dactyls. I didn't expect three Ripper Dactyls from him, but he did bring a lot of them and has a ton of healing. And Rev Crystals, guys, people often forget this, but they're using the Dark Arts to re revive their units. So they can actually bring things back to life, which is mega mega strong on the ripper dactyls like units that have really powerful individual models and being able to resurrect those that's why vampire count, uh, counts with you know crypt horrors and here i'm able to resurrect my crabs with invocation there's just a lot of really powerful synergies between those units right so gunnery white's giving extra powder i've been sitting pretty good in the powder department and uh, the gunnery white's uh, also giving a little bit of sh shooting support as well and using scabs grave the sacred cohort of quaddle i believe is what they're called they're just the cohort of quaddle moving in you know sacred this cohort that always a fun time but they're moving in. They're going to be packing quite a punch against the zombies. And uh, my bomber bats are back, but being hunted by his massive air force. And now I'm kind of in a position where I was like, okay, I need to hunker down. I need to value trade and just try and pick off some of the flyers. And the Colossus there gets a really nice shot. That's going to be a good Flamestorm right on top of the Depth Guard. So they're going to have to eat that one like champs. Flamestorm doesn't have the most armor piercing damage in the world, but it's still enough to get, you know, some okay damage on any sort of armored infantry. It's not like something like a Pit of Shades, which is like, oh God, I'm going to die. But... Yeah, Flamestorm is still very cost effective. I believe it only costs 12 or 13 wins, whereas like a Pit of Shades baseline is 15 now. So understandably, Lore of Fire is probably the better choice here too because of the prevalence of zombies. You're going to be wanting to get those uh, those big, big fat burning heads to clear down like gun lines and you know whatever else Vampire Coast tries to do. So still pushing up. Sacred Cohort pulling back. Just the Cohort. They're, uh, they are sacred. In my heart, they're sacred. The Shield of the Old One's going to be popped, giving them a little bit of ward safe. Looks like Hadris might be diving in here. So I do land my bats on the ground and then pull in the Halberds. And it looks like he does notice it at the last second. Granted, might lose a couple of those units. And now the dreaded Undead Swarm is on the way. So I'm like, okay, we need to centralize push in the middle. Just go right up the middle, try and get his back objective. And then when he loosens his defenses, we go for like a push here. So you can see, kind of, you, you have to plan ahead a little bit with Coast. Their units are somewhat slow. I don't know why these guys stopped moving. It was kind of strange. I think I had them attack ordered on a Chameleon Skink and then they went invisible. So then it like dropped the order, which does happen from time to time. You have to be uh, looking out for those things. Lampreys Revenge still doing great. They're healing caps, you know, tanking tanking all these uh, shots like a raid boss. It's certainly not cost effective for the Chameleon Skinks to be shooting against the uh, Lampreys Revenge. Rev Crystal's going down, and look at this. He's actually reaching, almost reaching healing cap on his Ripper Dactyls, which is really cool. And of course, once the HP of one of the Ripper Dactyls is at its max, it then resurrects a model. That's how that typically works in my, uh, my experience. Pretty sure that's accurate. Depth Guard doing good. Able to get their Halberds out. Invocation going down. They do push back the Sacred Cohort. Lampreys Revenge looking like they could get sandwiched here. And the big Ripper Dactyl Swarm uh, sitting over the Dark Elf Abyss. It looks like they're just enjoying some of that foul dark magic that is emanating from the depths of the Black Ark. As Lampreys Revenge move in, Blood Statue of Spite does a little bit of damage. And we got the Crabbo versus the uh, Power Fist. The, the, the duel. Only in Warhammer Fantasy would you see this. 
And now the Death Guard Polearm is going to be coming in with the rear charge. This could be quite good. This could be a big uh, potential reverse for us. Yes, Lampreys are going to die, but if he stays in sustained combat versus the Halberds, it will give us an opportunity there. And uh, you can see the uh, cohort of Waddle starting to take some considerable damage. A big Colossus squad shooting from downtown, trying to blast these guys. We got some scurvy dogs moving up. Value trading is pretty even. Although I would say he might have even out healed me this game. But yeah, these Death Guard, man, they're doing great. Really punching through. I would wager probably about 500 value on them so far. Okay, 800 value, not bad. Invocation going down, good to keep them uh, stable. And we do get a little bit of a pushback as uh, nobody wants to deal with these Death Guard. Now, dealing with Death Guard, you just want to tarp at them if they're the Halberd variant with like chaff units and then run them over with big monsters to be fine. Here, Doggo's going to be moving in. And like I said, Scurvy Dogs in numbers do have good DPS, especially because a lot of the models compile in. It's just like in tabletop how units with smaller bases can pile in and usually get a little bit more consolidated damage there. But we do get in and get that nice round of the Ripper Dactyl Shield of the old ones going down. That will give him a nice amount of ward save. So value is, you know, kind of staying in that similar category. Noctilus and his uh, giant cannon buddy, probably not the most value, only 1,200 here. And they've been shooting the, they've shot several, several waves of their ammunition. So yeah, it doesn't seem like they're like super impactful. I think having one Noctilus is good. I think two might be a little bit of overkill. Now, in order to win this game, we're going to need to get the low ground objective and things are going okay here. Animated Hulks and Scurvy Dogs working on the skin cohorts. Hadris does summon in the dreaded Horn Ones, which is kind of a cool tech. Granted, Horn Ones will trade extremely cost inefficiently with Animated Hulks. we got Pistol Mobs coming up just to try and get some capture weight. A little bit of a desperation thing. And now we are going to be charging into the Horn Ones, and hopefully the big crab people will be able to get some uh, work in there. So Horn Ones do take down a couple of the Doggos, but when the Anchors and Crab Claws get in there, that's when things are going to be changing, and uh, they would probably lose this fight, and uh, that would be a considerably bad trade for them. So I would imagine the Horned Ones will pull back and look for some skink support, and they do retreat at this point, especially with pistols helping. We got Felbats coming in, basically just summoning whatever I can. Uh, most of my zombies have been summoned up on the top wave, and you can see we're getting a little bit of pushback here. Really good burning head from Hatries, though. That was a beauty. It went down and hit the scurvy dogs, also hit the uh, deckhands here, and uh, just continues to burn out into the, uh, into the abyss here. But zombies trying. Zombies typically do okay against gank cohorts. Looks like there's going to be a banishment coming down from the toad right here, which is going to be going straight through a lot of my units. So overall, the slans magic has been super clutch this game. Only 2200 value, but it's not all about the value. It's also been clearing a lot of my infantry and my capture weight and kind of uh, stifling my pushes a little bit. So I'm out of ammo. I've used all my extra powder charges. I believe I used all four. So it's time to get in and start fighting with the Colossus. But this isn't necessarily good for me because they're terrible in combat, but they do get terror routes, right? So we can get terror routes on the skin cohorts, maybe start to get some capture weight here. Meanwhile, in the low ground, we do pull the value within 300. And I, the healing, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I've used all my Winds of Magic on Invocations. I don't think I cast a single Pit of Shades. He didn't really bring anything worth casting Pit on except the Horned Ones, uh, which are, you know, getting worked down here a little bit. Horned Ones do get some infantry support. But unfortunately, I think he's going to be able to push me off here. Chameleon Skinks are coming up. I do have some more animated hulks on the way out, but um, he's got a lot of these just like Chameleon Skinks just poking. The Horn Ones are insanely difficult to break. Their leadership, I think base is like almost 90. Let's go and check. Yeah, it's 85. So it's really tough to break them. And also when they Rampage, they do get you know physical resist and melee attack. So that is a hard one to wrestle off. But you can see the capture weight does start to flip a little bit. Up on the high ground, Count Noctilus and company. Yeah, they're trying their best, man. He's trying to get this objective, but I'm just running out of steam in terms of units. And Hadrius is creeping closer and closer to the old uh, to the old victory here. It's 1321, 1323. The tickets are going up at a very, very rapid rate as Vampire Coast kind of running out of steam a little bit. And the Lizard's getting a bit of a second win. The dreaded Horned Ones here. Uh, you know, probably not doing a ton of value if we take a look at the Horned Ones. Yeah, about 500 value is kind of cute. Wasn't really a lot for them to farm down here. I do get some pistol mobs coming in from reserve to try and help out. Noctilus and company, though, are just going to get bullied here. Colossus are really bad in combat, like I said. So the Cohort of Waddle, as well as the Bastillodon's probably going to be able to bump and grind those guys down. So if we fast forward here, not a whole lot going on. Mainly just going to be pistol mobs moving up. Objective going to be held. Objective going to be held. So if we had pulled all these forces, we might have been able to take the high ground objective, but then we would have lost on just the bottom objective, right? So we had to kind of push both. But overall, I think the game was within reach of being able to win if we had maybe consolidated our forces and pushed one lane instead of doing the split push. I think the split push against a lot of Lizardmen players or builds could have been good, but with his triple Ripper Dactyl, he was able to maneuver over super hard and rip through my infantry uh, and crabs alike. So I do think just doing a, a lane push would have been the way to probably go if I had known his build, which I obviously didn't. But in summary, the double Colossus, I think, was pretty bad. Um... I think one is fine. I do like it. Like just having a cannon to just shoot like, you know, at some one high value target. But the two of them, it just kind of, yeah, they, I don't think they just kind of barely paid for themselves in range. And that's with them getting extra ammunition too. If I didn't have the tools to give them extra ammo, they probably would have each had three or 400 value less. But um, yeah, overall, I think Vampire Coast is in a good place this season. They, they feel like some of the balancing changes have made them more fair. And uh, I'm excited to start playing them again. They're, I mean, who doesn't love pirates? I do think against lizards, if you just... Um, 
You probably just can, yeah, you could go wider. I do like Noctil, so he's pretty fun. Luther Harkin isn't a bad choice either, but he really gets owned by Chameleon Skinks, which are like the Scourge. Um, you can go Deck Gunners too, because Deck Gunners can range from downtown. You can go like Triple Deck Gunner, but that's kind of hard to protect against this Air Force too. He didn't bring any Feral Cold Ones either. Very different build. Well played, man. That was a really cool build by Hadrius. I loved the Ripper Dactyl Swarm. And uh, overall, I think it was kind of cool to see the Colossus in action. I just felt like they were a little bit lackluster. Um, just not good enough at clearing out infantry. And they didn't seem to do that much against his Rippers either. If he had gone more cap heavy, maybe they could have done more damage. GG, well played. Let me know your thoughts, guys. And uh, we will see you on the other side. Take care.